Welcome to Technology and Education Today. I'm Richard Smith. And I'm Caroline Crawford. And today we are talking about take, test taking strategies for online courses. And there's a lot to know, uh, but a lot of it is basic. Well, there's a lot that you have to consider when you're taking face to face classes and traditional quizzes within a classroom environment. But you're right, when it comes to the online quizzes, there are some additional things. Part of that is the same as a face-to-face -face quiz. Such as? Such as if you're in a math course, you need to have additional papers there to work out the problems and make sure that everything is copacetic and that if there are concerns by the instructor, the instructor may want to look over the pieces of paper before you sit down for the quiz, things like that. Like for a comprehensive examination, if you do have paper, then the proctor has to look over everything before. But of course, if you're online, the instructor can't really look at those papers. Right. But yeah. basically, I think what you're saying is that if you're taking a math test, uh, unless you work out everything on a computer, uh, you, if you think you're going to need paper, make certain you have a paper and uh, a pen or a pencil. So Same you can as work a face-to-face -face environment. Yeah. Exactly. And the other thing is... Common sense. Basic common sense. If you're in a course where you need this, have it available for you. Don't yeah. go rummaging around for it after the exam has already started because they're usually timed. I think that timing business is very important. And one of the things that... <laughs> that timing business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but one of the things that feeds into that is that... Um, you actually need to study, know the content. Who knew, huh? <laughs> before you start the test. In a lot of your courses, you have quizzes that are open book. In essence, they're and open book. If yes. you don't read the book beforehand, you're not going to do well. It's just common sense. Read it before you actually have to take a quiz on it. Even though it says open book, that's great, but that is not going to help you. Don't read it while the exam is open. Yeah, uh, what I, and that's a. And I've had people who, when I instructor courses mm -hmm. that have complained to me about that. You said it was open book. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I didn't read it until the quiz started. It's like, really? <laughs> What's the idea? Maybe that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> What's the idea that, of the, te the test to see is, is how well you understand retain and know the knowledge. That retain the knowledge. <laughs> the uh, fact that it's open book is kind of unavoidable in an online course. Yeah. And the way that I compensate for that is that the students have a pretty short time to um, fill in those answers. Way so, too short of a time, so but that's if, just my opinion. So if, if they don't know the answers uh, and they have to look up the answers for each and every question, that's when they get killed. So you really need to understand that the content. And the idea is that, that you just don't study. This is just study. a knowledge check. A right. short little quiz is just a knowledge check. It's but, not supposed to be an opportunity right. to read the book. The idea is that as the course progresses, you read the book and you study the material. Now, I know, Who these, knew? <laughs> I know these days a lot of students don't really like to read books, but uh, there are still a lot of online courses which are uh, book-dependent or text-dependent or, or website-dependent. Whatever is in the course, whatever the assignments are in the course. You're, you're, to, you're actually course. expected to learn uh, something. Another thing to, <laughs> to take into consideration is before you, you take that test, an online test, Make certain your computer is working. Make certain... <laughs> make, and your internet connection is make, solid. I have, make if certain you have, are over wireless, if you have a couple of flubs here and there, it keeps kicking you offline, don't use that as the environment in which you're taking your quiz. <laughs> that's right. If you know that your internet connection is not a very strong internet connection... Go move. to campus. Go to a community yes. college where they'll allow you access. Go to a Starbucks. Sorry, Starbucks. But <laughs> go to a Starbucks where you have more stable Wi-Fi. Exactly. And, you oh, know... and pop-up blockers. Don't forget pop-up blockers. Yes, make certain you have your pop-up blockers turned off uh, on your computer for any uh, website that, for the uh, course management system that you're going to be using to take the, uh, the exam. It's turned on or off. Find out beforehand from the instructor mm -hmm. what the environment is, how they've set up the well, environment. That, and that, if the instructor is any good, or the course is any good, it will tell them. <laughs> <laughs> tell you Ooh, in, the, boy. in the course. <laughs> Another thing is that if the test is timed, and most tests online are timed, are. make certain that you start the test, begin physically begin the test when you're ready to take the test. In other words, don't click start the test, push click that button, and then say, well, I wonder where and I And then run my around the house telling everyone, hush now, I have things I have to do, turn off the phone, all the things that are taking advantage of where your those, time and effort. Where are those papers I was going to use to... Uh, to outline my ideas and so on. So I, I have guess everything they're together. Don't 
don't start anything because before of, you've already informed the, everyone. The, uh, Hush now, the, turn the, off the your clock, phone, anything you need to do. The clock is... Uh, ticking. The clock's ticking. The clock is ticking, exactly right. And when, they, when the time runs out, you cannot get back into the test. And what will happen is you will go begging for the mercy of your instructor to let you back in. And if Well, the instructor might give you, might give you an opportunity the first time. If you're amazingly unlucky, maybe the second time. But enough's enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly you right. You cannot be treated differently than everyone else in the class. Then you're going to have to figure out a test-taking strategy, which is exactly the same uh, if you were taking the test face-to-face -face on paper. And there, there are two Depends paths there. Depends upon how the, course is, the course quizzes exams mm -hmm. are set up. Some of them you only see one question at a time, and you have no option but to address that question. Some of them you have all of the questions listed, like in a traditional Okay, so then what do you think? Do you think they should answer the simplest questions first, the ones they, they, uh, they know? and uh, If that's the option, absolutely. But sometimes, depending upon how the quiz is set up, you don't have the opportunity to go back and address... Yeah, and, and different you, questions that you haven't responded to at that point. And when I do that, done is done is done is zero. And other instructors do that. It's basically uh, an, an anti-cheating device, so that uh, you can't on an open book exam. <laughs> on an open, so you can't quickly, you know, transfer the answers to question uh, the other questions to other students that you may be online with and using something else like maybe like Skype or something like that. Uh. Short story on the side. Um, one in specific instructor I'm thinking of always used exactly the same questions in the courses, and the students would tell me after they graduated, of course, that they had databases of all of these quizzes and all of the courses that this instructor offered, and they would just share them amongst the students. Okay, you're taking great, this class? Great, Here it is. Great scholars, yes. <laughs> well, and I went to the instructor and said, just so you know, this is going on in your course. No judgment, whatever. And the response I received was very interesting. There's no way the students could do that. My quizzes are brilliant and difficult, and there's no way they could do that, and I change them every semester. It's like, that's great to know. But just so you know, so, so what <laughs> there are, are databases going around, and if you so claim to change them every semester, you, that's awesome, are you but it's not true. Are you advocating a test-taking strategy that all the students get together, share the answers, and keep them in database? <laughs> well, you were talking about having all the things on the side and consider <laughs> the timing of it, because there is always the opportunity for everybody to get together and talk about, hey, what, what would you answer for this? Have you already gone through this one? And, and mm -hmm. that's where the story came from. Not only that, but there are databases running out there. And if you choose to offer the exact same quiz every single time as the course instructor, recognize... It, ha it, ha it, ha it has to be changed. Okay, there's one last thing I'd like to get into because we've actually been talking mostly about short answer type of uh, tests or multiple po choice tests, which is the, the essay Knowledge question. Knowledge base level, yeah, usually. It, usually you now, can enhance it, but... This is very, very typical... Uh, the same technique, I believe, is can be used or should be used in a uh, online co course for an essay question as in a face-to-face -face co co uh, course. Absolutely. And the basic flaw in most students' writing is uh, that, that, that they're using run-on sentences and their sentences are filled with uh, grammatical mistakes. So when an instructor reads that, you, you already have a, uh, a problem no matter how accurate your response is. Well, so to be my, fair, if it's a time yeah. exam, that's not a fair concern. Well, but beside the point. <laughs> One should in consider order, a spell check, grammar in order, check, but. In order, to ch in order to fix that, in order to fix that, my suggestion would be you as a student, keep your sentences short. Get Correct. To, get to the point. Say what you want to say. Make your main point in your first sentence of your essay, in your first paragraph, and then follow it by a number of short sentences which support your main point. Go on to your second paragraph, and so on, and well, that sounds like laying sentence. everything out in an outline before you start writing. <laughs> it does, and it means keep your sentences simple because if your se sentences are simple, the chances of you making a grammatical mistake go way down. And well, not boy meets girl, very simple no, sentences. You, you, you have to obviously meet the level of expectation within the course structure. Right. But, but, but lay off the ands and so on and try not to make yourself t terribly verbose. And with that, we've reached the <laughs> end <laughs> of another edition of Technology and Education Today. For Technology and Education Today, I'm Richard Smith.
And from the verbose side of the house, I'm Caroline Crawford. <laughs> Bye.